Cancerous Disguise. Item number, SCP-8888. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. No objects or creatures are to be left within the containment area of SCP-8888 without personnel present. Two to four D-Class personnel must attend to SCP-8888's containment area on a weekly schedule. Armed with a manually powered mechanical scooper, a standard biohazard hazmat protection suit, one liter of gasoline, and a box of matches to reduce the current size of SCP-8888 by 75% of its original mass. In addition, D-Class must coat the inner wall of the containment area with white quick-dry cement. Check the condition of the high-intensity fluorescent lights located at the ceiling of the containment area, replacing the bulbs if necessary, and inspect the containment area for any damage or cracks. They must also be aware of the current position of SCP-8888 at all times. Description SCP-8888 is a shapeless, sapient hive mind of unidentified tumor stem cells in a conjoined mass roughly 1.6 meters in both length and height. The tumors of SCP-8888 rapidly deteriorate and regrow, working collectively to keep the hive mind stable. SCP-8888 retains a bright purple color and emits purple sludge while maneuvering itself. The anomalous properties of SCP-8888 occur when SCP-8888 makes direct contact with any living life form. Approximately two minutes after contact, SCP-8888 will change its size and color to suit that of the life form it has made contact with. It accomplishes this by reducing or increasing the cell growth within its own mass, though how SCP-8888 changes the color of its tumors to match the life form is unknown. Once SCP-8888 completes its transformation into the aforementioned life form, it will seek out to complete the function of the life form's desire. See Experiment Log number 8888-7. However, the completion of SCP-8888's mimicry includes an involuntary physical deformity of the life form it mimics. This deformity hinders SCP-8888's possibility of functioning as the life form up to 90%. SCP-8888 can only mimic life forms for three hours before SCP-8888's shape begins to deform and purple color returns, originating back to its former state. Addendum The recovery of SCP-8888 occurred on June 17, 2000, blank. A loud commotion originating from the office of Dr. Blank caught the attention of a small amount of staff personnel at 12.32 p.m. afternoon. A nearby Level 1 researcher staff and facility guard entered the office of Dr. Blank. Both reported the area appeared to have been ravaged. The desk of Dr. Blank, laying in the eastern corner of the office, while his other personal possessions were spread across the floor. What the personnel formerly thought was Dr. Blank also faced the southeast corner of the office, their back towards the two personnel. They both questioned Dr. Blank on the state of the office and instructed Dr. Blank to turn towards them. Dr. Blank complied, tilting their body away from the corner. This in turn allowed both personnel to view enormous deformities in the arms, torso, and face areas of Dr. Blank. Both personnel describing the deformities claim it as the skin and muscle structure being mangled, twisted, or enlarged to an abnormal degree. Dr. Blank stared at the two personnel for approximately 24 seconds before dissolving into a puddle of what appeared to be skin, muscle tissue, and bone marrow. After three minutes of lingering, the dissolved remains adapted a purple coloration, also becoming sapient in the process. The now sapient substance began to quiver in the corner of the office. The facility guard managed to contain the substance in a large glass jar which had been lying around on the office's ground. To date, the whereabouts of the actual Dr. Blank are unknown. However, the substance, after numerous tests, has gained the designation SCP-8888.